Hi, this is a video of the account of how things all went so horribly, terribly wrong in these last days. And just to start out, this is an advanced level video. There's a lot of stuff that you may need to know beforehand. Not all of which is going to be available on this earth right now. The closest you're going to get is in my articles and videos in the past. Which, of course, are all based on evolving levels of knowledge that not just I have, but that the, even the eternal realm had. So, we're all getting through this together. It may take some work. If you're the type that thinks everything is planned, everything was planned, there's no flaws, there's nothing, every single word of the Bible is correct, unchangeable, everything that's going to happen has happened is unchangeable, What? just stop the video right now. Uh, let's do us both a favor. Now, going forward, when things happen, sometimes there's people that through odd circumstances get access to knowledge and see things and are part of things that wasn't really planned beforehand. It just sort of happened and you get this knowledge. I have this knowledge. I have to get it out. It's going to take a bit of legwork on your part to get through it, but here it is. Okay, so first of all, the, the information we need to know first. This world, it's a drop and bop world. It's a world that is rough and tumble. Learning is not really, really gentle all the time. It should be self-evident for anyone that's had to go through things. And how did we get there? The, if to remember back to the genome, everything goes back to the genome. People always think about free will. Free will? Do you think a lion has free will? You think that it has free will when it gets hungry? Maybe it'll just want to go farm and eat grass. Maybe it'll happen. But probably not. So a lion has free will. But nature's going to do what nature's going to do. Now, humanity is very much like that. But, of course, you have a lot more complexity and you have to add time, and you have to add more things that we can do and more choices, but the real important point is never underestimate how much of an apex predator species humanity was and is. And also never underestimate the power of taking away love and compassion. Do you think an, a, a lion has compassion for his prey? No. It's dinner. You can't be sobbing and crying over the fact that some poor, you know, prey animal just lost its life so he can eat. No, it's, come here, there, sir. And there is an element of taking away love, compassion for other beings that has to exist in a predator species for it to be a predator species. And, of course, humans are a predator species, but we're a mixed bag. Some of us are apex predators, some of us aren't. And in other jargon you might hear, psychopaths and narcissists. If you listen to our psychology that you're going to hear from this psychologist or that, you'll hear this, uh, this aberrant behavior or this... Um, Thing that happened that's unfortunate it's not genetic it's just you know a mess up of their education or, or this cycle no it's not it's not any of that stuff psychopaths and narcissists are bred there is absolutely a genetic factor I can tell you this for a fact because I know very 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 well the geneticists in the eternal realm and they know this for a fact. They have all the data. It's 100% genetic. But also, there is also uh, education and history and life choices component too. There is 
psychopaths that are just made through choices. But let's get back to the point here. Understand psychopaths and narcissists, for the most part, are fueled by choices and by nature. And the choices they make feed nature. And over time, you're not, your, your DNA isn't just hardwired to make you 100% exactly what you are. There's choices you have. There's how it expresses. There's the epigenetics of everything. And so as you make choices and as things happen to you in life, as you grow up, you physically change. Your mind gets hardwired different ways. You physically change into a predator that doesn't have the capacity to love like it did. You may think you do. But your version of love is something that is not as deep as somebody that's made compassion choices their whole life. Because you're not hardwired to do it anymore. And it's not capable. It's, you're, you're not really capable of it because your mind is hardwired. Now, there's ways to step back from it. There's ways to... It's hard. But th understand, that this is what happens. You can disagree with me, but I'm not wrong because I'm not basing it on me. I'm basing it on the geneticists that have told me this, and they have thousands of years of experience. Your mind and your body changes. And you become less capable of love. And that's dangerous. So, how does that have anything to do with anything? Well, quite simply this. When we first made the leap, and, and, and this is where we got off track, is when we, got, you know, when we first made the leap, everybody... Into the eternities. Everybody wanted to just step away from all the war that they'd known. Their world had a lot of war. I mean, the giants, the giants that came here, they were genetically engineered super soldiers. They weren't just random giants that just happened to evolve that way. No, <laughs> evolution doesn't work that way. Um, they, they didn't evolve like that. They were super soldiers. They were, they were designed. The world that our eternal civilization came from, the same world that came with the giants, it was a world that had war. And it was rough. So they wanted to step away from all that. They did a lot of education. They did a lot of teaching. They did simulators. They did lots of stuff to try to make sure their kids knew right from wrong and, and whatnot. But problem is, the genome's the genome. And time is a bear. <laughs> time is like sand. You can brush it a little bit off, and a lot of it's going to crush you. I've said that a lot. It's true. Anyone that has any knowledge of what it's really like to live, not just 100 years, but two, three, four, five, six hundred years, a thousand years, two thousand years, three thousand, four thousand, you keep going. Time will drive you mad. And it will always drive people mad unless they have it together. And what is strong enough to hold people together mentally and not just survive mentally the many years, but thrive? It isn't lust. It isn't anger. It isn't hate. It's love. Love is more stable. In order to really truly be loving and peaceful, you have to have all of your problems resolved. You have to have the knowledge and wisdom, and you have to iron out the differences and not have things gnawing at you. Anger feels strong. I feel like I'm really powerful. It feels really good, but when it comes down to it, there's always something underneath it that's causing it that's, un that's painful. That pain will eat you. And as much as you think, oh, I'm angry, I'm powerful, I'm not going to be one of these weak as sissy people that feels things and just yeah no no matter how you deep bury it it's gonna come out but let's get back to the point so the point is people go crazy over long periods of time unless you have love and compassion but what do young people want to do they want to go after the quick flashy things they don't want to go live this boring fuddy-duddy life where they have to do this and do that and learn and master themselves and master their own psychology and understand what they're, you know, 
their actions do to affect them. They don't want to know that. They want to do fun, exciting things. Not all of them, but a lot of them do. And understand what, who you see now and the choices that we're making now and the choices that you made were not made back then by everybody. In fact, they weren't by, made by then by most people. And it's not just simply decision making. You don't understand this until you really feel what it's like in both both genomes. And it's hard to do. So when you're in the older genome, it's your body is not objective. Your body is if you know these people that are that just get more out of the high of being with a bunch of different women or more out of the high of just being this angry person that just thumps somebody else and they just don't get as much out of the the finer more logical things well it's less more in the old genome it's pre-programmed to be more violent it's pre-programmed to care less and it's harder to do the things with compassion it just is it's harder they don't have as much of the capacity because it didn't work in terms of evolution. And the deep amount of caring is a liability. It really is back then, but it's a strength when you have to then live long, long periods of time. But who in the nature has to live individually 3,000 years? You don't live a little bit you have to be tougher and boom you thump the others there you go but getting back to the point so you had that thing where people weren't making good decisions and it did come down to the genetics the genetics were a mess that's what nature handed them and that mess meant that 90 percent of society was lost back then you hear these stories of the devil taking 30%. 30% was a lie. It was a big, fat lie. The real number was 90 plus. And it wasn't the devil, per se, in this really just brother of Jesus type of thing. The, the real devil was nature and the genome. The actors that did that, let's say, why would the brother of Jesus do that? Why would he? Well, when it comes down to it, it's genetics. It's the capacity and the tendency to do certain things combined with the decisions of people that then create a big mess of a person. There is, of course, free will, but that free will is colored tremendously by the genetics and the desires to do certain things and the in incapability of doing other things easily. So that's where we were at. And so when you get into this earth world, how it was designed was it was a whole mess starting this it was never intended to be exactly like this but it's a story for another day but how it came to be designed was a drop and bop system quite simply nature's going to make you do what it's going to make you do you're going to go down and do it you're going to then after this life is done go to the next life, get a lot of these hormones and this anger things just stripped out of you, get more peaceful, get more objective, and when you can really stop and think straight because you're not mad at everyone or doing all these crazy things, then you can then be seen, shown what you were done with your life and it'll make sense. And you'll learn not to do that stuff. Skipping a lot over a lot of stuff, a lot of important details, but it's had elsewhere. But another thing is, well, what happens to those people that are dead set in their way? There's really bad people. What about hell? Well, the purpose of hell was not an eternal punishment area. Where I know you're told, okay, what's well, eternal? Well, eternal is the name of the society because its its depth is it wasn't forever. You don't bring beings into existence to make them sit forever because of things they did, partly because of the genome, partly because they weren't told right, because of this. You don't put them there forever. Why would you create them? Like, why would you have kids if a lot of them are just going to go to hell forever? You'd 
don't want to do that. Even they didn't want to. I mean, like, they wouldn't want to do that. But not to mention that, that's cruel. But the whole point of Earth, the whole point of Earth was to not lose kids. Because they were sick and tired of it. They were sick and tired of all these little kids going and doing things and running off and doing things that made them go so crazy that they just preferred death. There were times, I'm not saying the whole history of our society, 90% of everyone died. No, there was a time, a specific time, way back then when 90% of those people alive at that time died. And as things went on, you got better and better and better in most people. Then you got most people starting to do well, but you still had losses. And this was an effort to stop those losses. So why would you want to put people in hell forever when the whole point of it is to not have that? No, the point of hell was quite simply this. Psychopaths and narcissists have really strong genetics. And when you combine those really strong genetics with choices and with what happened to their bodies and hardwiring their minds that way, they lost the capacity to love the deeply, the deep type of love that they really need. And so you have to get them loving again. Well, how do you do that? They don't want to do that. They're dead set against doing that. And they don't have the capability. It just doesn't, it's not one of the things that makes them drive. They don't know it. So with a lot of work and a lot of figuring out, they figured out that, um, and there was computer models and this and that, uh, and a lot of hard experience. And basically you put them through hell. You have to literally have them go through so much pain and torture basically that it breaks their mind so something interesting happens when your mind and, and they knew this because people get through get to this point in certain situations naturally and they, they saw what happened but once you go through a certain amount of really really tremendous pain and it goes on for a certain length of time then your mind breaks and the time that people are in hell is typically 100 years, maybe 200 years. but And, and it's not all one solid block. Sometimes there's, there's breaks to see, and then you have to come back to see if you're going to make those choices again. Not here at Earth, but a uh, long story. Yeah, 100 years. More or less. Sometimes more. A lot of times more. But you break your mind, and once it's broken then at that point it can be reformed into a really nice kind loving person and that's the purpose of hell is to break the mind so that it can then later be reformed and taught they don't have the goal of torturing people forever they just don't what's the point of it because angry people here say well they murdered someone they, well yeah i understand that that action was bad but that, that was not an action by itself it was an action by someone who didn't know better for one for two, death is not death. Like, a person that was murdered is pretty much instantly going to be in the next life learning things anyway. And three, the genetics steered the steered the kid that way. And you'll find out later is the council steered the things in ways that really led to those things too. So, no, you don't, you don't hold it against them forever, especially since the person that was killed is not really dead. They're, they're just into the next life earlier. So, yeah, 100 years of intense pain and torture is enough. They went up. There you go. So, that's still the history of the things. This is what the life was. It's a rough and tumble. It's a drop and bop. Drop and bop is honestly not planned that much. It's not something that, well, there's this grandiose plan that you're supposed to do this and you're supposed to do that and everything. No. Some things were planned. Some things were planned very well. But the old genome is tremendously hard to control. And as I've said before, what and the how and the why is people are believe what they want to believe. And if you're one of these people that is so deeply offended by everything I'm saying, well, I'm sorry, but you're going to figure it out in a few hundred years anyway once you, you get through your whole in tantrum. But um, the way to teach people on Earth was never to come down with this 
grandiose set of everything right and everything wrong. And here you go. Why don't you learn it? And this is, that's what people want to think that they already have. This is how they always were. Humans always thought that whatever weird thing that they thought was 100% right and everyone else was 100% wrong. And that's just humanity because people want to be right. People will be right because of sheer force of will. I'm right. You're not. <laughs> and they use humor to, to mask the fact that they're an idiot. No, humanity does that over and over. What you think is right, you're going to find reasons to make you right. And there you go. You're going to be right. And the more you look for the reason, yeah, no. So how you teach humanity is you let them think what they want to think. And you start adding things to it to make them a little bit less wrong. And you do it over time. And there you go. And that's this is the ideal of how it was supposed to work. Is people were crazy start drip feeding them stuff over time build the the society and there you go it makes sense that's a good plan it's a good plan because you don't have any choice in the matter they, they there was an attempt like i said to drop the knowledge down here teach people right they didn't want it you talk to the kings and the leaders and the pharaohs of the world here give this knowledge to people they don't want to do it so it's all a game nobody wants to know it's a game Nobody wants to think that all these aliens are fake. Nobody wants to think that every single thing that's ever been given to any of the leaders is fake. No one wants to th oh, you for this full. No, <laughs> honestly, people want to believe what people want to believe. Psychological manipulation just works better. You don't come down with the truth. One, that's giving away a strategic advantage. But two, it doesn't work anyway. People want to believe what they want to believe. And they're very stubborn about it. So you teach them incrementally. And you also get the stubborn ones. You just throw them stuff that's going to make them useful idiots. What do you like the CIA and the what? And on all those people, you know, they call us useful idiots. <laughs> they're the biggest useful idiots because they don't know what's up from down. And they don't even know that. They think they do. They're the ones that have been controlled. Psychological manipulation is used tremendously in all the elites, all the kings, all the cabals, all the ancient families. That's all they get is psychological manipulation. Things that are fake, that are meant to just lead them. That's just how things are. And this is why every one of the things that humanity has been given is, is basically just a control tool. I understand that we want to believe that all these things are really grandiose and wonderful, but they are grandiose and wonderful from a point of view. We just want to live at peace. Psychopaths don't do peace. Predators don't do peace. They don't get off on it. The genome didn't wasn't really compatible with it. And no matter how you do it, war comes. You can get big wars that are more infrequent, or you can get little wars that are always happening. But it always comes, because people are violent, because of the genome, and because of decisions, and because of all of the mess. So yeah, why does humanity deserve 100% truth? <laughs> it doesn't. It's too violent. It's always been too violent. But again, this is the ideal of how it was supposed to be, what we were taught, what the council thought. This is what they thought, but how did it go wrong then? Well, let me pause here, because I need to do the video B, because this uh, often gets chopped into 30 minute sections. This video was the ideal, of the, the, the what people thought they were doing. Next. Part is um, what actually happened. <laughs>